straight on to the business news for you now on the programme. We're going to start, in fact, with uh, America's central bank. This is the Federal Reserve, of course, uh, resisting pressure from Donald Trump as it decides to keep interest rates steady for now. France 24's business editor, Brian Quinn, with us uh, with the latest. That's right, Stuart. The latest meeting of the Fed saw the central bank hold rates steady at two and a quarter to two and a half percent. That decision follows sustained pressure from Donald Trump to lower interest rates. The president says a strong dollar is hurting the competitiveness of U.S. companies. Well, Trump has repeatedly explored options for firing or demoting Fed Chair Jerome Powell. Powell, though, says the law is clear that his term is for four years and he intends to serve it all. Despite holding rates steady for now, the Fed signaled increased willingness to cut rates later in the year, potentially as early as July. Roughly half of the bank's 17 governors are on board to lower rates within six months, some by a full half percent. Powell says he's closely monitoring economic conditions. At the FOMC meeting that concluded today, we maintained our policy interest rate, but made some significant changes to our statement. In light of increased uncertainties and muted inflation pressures, we now emphasize that the committee will closely monitor the implications of incoming information for the economic outlook and will act as appropriate to sustain the expansion with a strong labor market and inflation near its 2% objective. Checking in on the markets now, Asian indexes rose today. Investors encouraged by that possibility of an imminent rate cut in the U.S. The Nikkei in Tokyo closing up around six tenths of a percent as Japan's central bank also kept rates steady while noting mounting risks over international trade tensions. Hong Kong's Hong Seng up nearly a percent. The Shanghai Composite up around 2.4 percent. The Kospi in Seoul with just around a third of a percent gain at the close there. European indexes opening in positive territory as investors look ahead to a rate decision from the Bank of England. It's the only central bank expected to signal a coming rate hike. London's FTSE 100 up over half a percent. The Cat Carol here in Paris up over two-thirds of a percent. Frankfurt tax up eight-tenths of a percent at the open. Next, Mexico has become the first country to ratify the USMCA free trade agreement. The new deal largely resembles the NAFTA trade deal. It replaces Mexico's vote was delayed recently amid threats from Donald Trump to levy tariffs unless it took action to stop Central American migrants from reaching the U.S. border. Solange Mujan reports. 114 yeas to four nays. Mexico has ratified by an overwhelming majority a new North American free trade agreement. The first country to do so, Mexico sends around 80 percent of its goods, or over $350 billion worth of goods last year, to the United States. So the president praised the move. Now we can have these commercial relationships with new circumstances. They're good and beneficial to Mexico because they mean foreign investment. They mean jobs in Mexico. They mean guaranteeing trading goods with the U.S. Signed in 1994, NAFTA will now, if ratified by the three countries, become the USMCA, or the U.S.-Mexico-Canada Agreement. Donald Trump has repeatedly said the 25-year-old accord was the worst trade deal in U.S. history. I don't like NAFTA. I never liked it. It's been very bad for the United States. It's been great for Canada. It's been great for Mexico. The New Deal is similar to the old one, but it establishes different rules for the ever-important auto sector. Canada is expected to ratify the text, as is the United States, but it could face pushback from Democrats, who voice concern about its provisions on worker protections and the environment. Trump encouraged Congress to push it through on Twitter, eager to tout a victory during the 2020 campaign. But at the same time, Trump has repeatedly conjoined trade issues with foreign policy ones, or threatened tariffs on Mexico unless it combats illegal immigration, a threat that's currently on hold. But the elephant in the room, it continues to hang over a Mexican-American diplomacy and trade. And finally for business, one of its slogans is the brand with the three stripes. But the EU's second highest court is not terribly impressed. On Wednesday, it ruled Adidas's three-stripe logo invalid as a trademark on the grounds that it lacks a distinctive character. The German sporting goods company has been locked in a dispute with a rival Belgian firm using just two stripes. Adidas had tried to trademark three equidistant stripes in any direction, in any color. The General Court of the EU says that logo is not an instantly recognizable pattern, but just, quote, an ordinary figurative mark. 
and Stuart, if they had managed to trademark three lines in any direction, yeah. any color, I think the French flag might actually be in violation of Adidas' <laughs> trademark in that Change case. it. Yeah. Change it. Or pay. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very true. Thank you, Brian. Analysis there from our business editor.